one of the most common questions we get from people is when they want to sign up for internet speed, how much bandwidth or how much speed do I need? People don't really know and it's hard to gauge and there's no, there's no fast set concrete rule. Like if you do this, this is what you need. But there are some guidelines that we can give you guys that might make it a little easier. That's what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about that. So one of the things I want to talk about is, are the people, the different types of users there are for internet. So let's talk about the people that are light users as we call them. You break those down into some categories. Let's talk about the first one. We talk about we talk about light use, basic web. Uh, those people that maybe check their email on it. You might do a little bit of online shopping. You go out there and check your social media accounts from time to time, and that's pretty much about all you do with your internet connection. Well, in that case, then usually two, as you see the MBPS over my shoulder, which stands for megabits per second. We always call it megs. So two megs per device is usually perfect for a good to great experience. That's important. You want to have a good or great experience. You want to sit there and wait and wait and wait while your Facebook page loads or wait for your email to download or, or if you purchase something and you hit you know, check out and you're sitting there waiting for it to check out. At least two megabits per device. That's important to say per device because and we're talking about a laptop, tablet, even your smartphone that you may use to do these things in your home with your Wi-Fi. So two megabits per device is what you need just for that basic. Take it up a notch. Let's say maybe you like to stream music off Pandora, your Spotify account, Amazon Music, iTunes. There are all sorts of music sites out there or music subscription sites where you can stream music from smart devices, your phone, any other place like that. Again, doing those kinds of things, just streaming the music, you probably need another two meg per device to do that. That way you'll have a nice uninterrupted flow of your music. Uh, you don't have to worry about it pausing or, or buffering or all of a sudden stopping in the middle of a song. That will do it. Two megs per device will, will take care of that for you. So we're talking about you have if you just do email and Facebook, that's two megs. And you like to stream music on top of that, that's another two meg on top of that for one device. And let's take up one more notch. Let's talk about streaming video, which a lot of people do that. Raise your hands if you guys like to stream video and watch shows like Net from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, places like that. For a connection off your Roku device, your Fire TV stick, maybe even your smart TV, we're talking you probably need about a six, six meg per stream. And we're not talking HD quality yet or even 4K. We'll talk about that in a minute. Just a nice picture, a solid picture that's not going to keep buffering on you, not going to keep pausing on you. 6 meg is probably pretty good for that um, to get you going on that. So those kinds of things for the base, what we would call a basic user, people that are not like using a lot, um, just using it for those kinds of things. So what does that mean? Well, obviously we're talking per device. So just a reminder on these things, more devices means you need more speed or more bandwidth. So if, they're, if you're streaming in the house, you're streaming your music, somebody else is checking their email, maybe somebody else is pulling up the latest show on Netflix, those are three devices that are each pulling down a stream. So keep that in mind. More devices requires more bandwidth and more activity requires more bandwidth. Again, three people in the home, the more people you have that are using it at the same time, you're going to need more bandwidth, more speed. So you've done those. Let's, let's talk the next step. We would call a heavy user or heavier user, somebody who really uses their internet connection a lot. And the first one we want to talk about is what we might say advanced web use. And by that, meaning they check their email and all that, but maybe they also belong to a photo sharing site like Flickr, where they go on and load photos on, tons of photos, high quality photos. Maybe you video chat, you get on there and FaceTime with family and friends, and there are other websites you can use to video chat with. You're going to want a great stream on that, something that's not going to pop pause like that. Uh, you know, the audio is not going to match up and sync up with your video. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to need a good connection for that, and that is a requirement of at least, at least 6 meg per device to do that. Got to have it. At least 6 meg uh, per device up to 16. Some, it depends. If it's a lot of photos, 
you're waiting for a lot of photos to load, or it's a really um, a, a site that really, if like a video chat, that really takes a lot of bandwidth, 16 meg, even up to 16 meg it could use. But what if you like to stream video in HD or even 4K? Because now you can do 4K streaming, which is the next step above high definition, right? For those of you that know, maybe you already have UH uh, TVs. They call them, you know, Ultra TVs, 4K TVs, whatever you want to call it, UHD TV. You're going to need even more. So minimum for HD connection, you're going to want to have 8 meg available for a quality HD signal to stream from your favorite Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, like we've mentioned before. That's not going to sit there and buffer on you. Now, if you're talking about 4K and your device can handle 4K, it could take up to 25 meg to pull down a true 4K stream. Um, that you can see that beautiful, crisp picture. So that's, that's quite a bit of, of internet bandwidth, if you think about it. And of course, we don't want to forget those online gamers, right? All you people out there who like to play Fortnite, Call of Duty, Halo, maybe even stuff like NBA 2K19 against other people online. Online gaming consoles and online gaming takes the most bandwidth. And why is that? Well, part of the reason is if you watch a show, it may be 30 minutes, maybe an hour, Online gamers don't usually play 30 minutes to an hour. They play a lot longer than that. It's a, it's a big demand on their, on their stream. Plus, depending on the graphics that are allowed in the game, um, how many players are online, how you access it, usually through your Xbox, PlayStation, console, Nintendo Switch, whatever it may be, it requires a solid, solid stream to not kick you out of the game, to not lock up on you. So you're talking a minimum of 10 meg, upwards of 25 meg, to have a really great gaming experience when you do that online. So let's say that somebody in the house um, is on Flickr. They're, they're loading up a bunch of photos and sharing photos, having a great time. Meanwhile, somebody else in the house is streaming. They're binge watching their favorite show on Netflix in HD. And somebody else in another part of the house is gaming online. They're playing, they're playing Call of Duty online. So you're talking right there, if you add those up, that's a minimum of 24 meg minimum that you would need to have for everybody to have a good or great experience online. So as you can see, depending on what you do with your internet and who's on it, can really make a difference on the speeds that you need. And once again, to remind everybody, more devices requires more bandwidth. If three people are streaming music in the house, that's three streams, right? So each one of those is going to need at least two megabits to have a great streaming experience for their audio. And also more activity. The more people you have in the house, family members, whatever, and not only just family members, but other smart home devices. We're going to talk about that. Those are going to require bandwidth as well, right? If you have a thermostat, an Echo, uh, Google Home, any of those devices like that, right? A digital picture frame. Those kinds of things require constant internet connectivity in order to work, in order to work properly. So what if I need more? So now what? That's the question, right? You're wondering about, man, what if I do need more internet? Well, the first suggestion we would have, if you think you might need more or not sure, is find out if you what's available in your area. Give us a call. We have made upgrades um, in a lot of areas and continue to do so. So what you signed up for, there may be even higher speeds available now. For example, in Morency, we're having to replace our traditional copper cable as they go through and replace uh, power poles, which is how our stuff is hooked up in Renzi, we're replacing with fiber. So that instantly gives people much more speed, much more bandwidth than they've ever had before. And even in the other areas, we have upgraded a lot of our central offices, a lot of our uh, network equipment. So check it out. Call us. It doesn't take but five minutes to call us and see what's available in your area. You may be surprised to find out that there's more available than you thought. Also, I talked about your uh, smart devices, and your smartphone, the default on your smartphone, unless you go and change it, is to automatically connect to Wi-Fi networks that you know as soon as you're within range. So if you walk in the house, your phone's in your pocket, you go over and put it on the charger and leave it over on the, the counter or whatever, it's still, run, it's still hooked to your internet. It's still pulling some internet down, some bandwidth. And if you have apps on your phone, 
that are you didn't quite shut down that might still be on there? I mean, you've closed out of it, but it's still not closed. You guys know what I'm talking about? You haven't really shut the app down. It's still pulling bandwidth as well. And not to mention devices, like I said, like a thermostat, for example, a ring doorbell, any of those devices like that, Amazon, Echo, a Google, they are constantly hooked to your network. And they may not be constantly working really hard on your network, but all those devices add up and they are all slightly pulling on your internet connectivity. And those can cause buffering, slowdowns, and a frustrating experience of those. So one of the quick and easy ways to do that if you're not using your phone is to put it on airplane mode. That way you don't have to go through and shut every app down and then you can turn off your settings for, I don't want it to automatically connect to Wi-Fi when I walk into the house. Or temporarily, just put it on airplane mode. You can still receive calls and make calls, but that's it. And it's not pulling your internet connectivity. Also be aware of, in some cases, not many, but in some cases, how many people in your neighborhood are on the internet at the same time may cause a little slowing or buffering on your internet experience. Um, not on our network usually, but it can happen. So just be aware, 7 to 11, magic hour, right, at night when everybody's home, or most everybody's home, that's when everybody's uh, doing all their things online at night. And of course, 60% of households, the number one thing they do in that internet rush hour is stream video. Because those cord cutters and those people that don't have normal TV, that's when they start binge watching their shows or catch up on shows that they've missed. So that's always important to remember. So hope that information has been helpful for you guys. Um, like I said, you can always ask us questions. And if you're not sure, give us a call. 1-800-421-5711 uh, is our 800 number, toll free for everybody.